The national government deplores the decision by the ELN to resume its terrorist actions against the civilian population, the armed forces, and infrastructure. The national government was always willing to extend the ceasefire with that organization and quickly negotiate a new one. Year-long peace talks between the Colombian government and the Rebel National Liberation Army, or ELN, have come to an abrupt stop. It happened after a ceasefire expired and within hours, attacks on government targets started up again. President Juan Manuel Santos condemned them and pulled his negotiators out of Ecuador, where the talks were being held. Now to have a look at how all of this happened and what happens next, let's talk to Carlos Caicedo in London. He specializes in assessing risk in Latin America for IHS Market, a global advisory firm. Carlos, thank you very much for joining us. Has Santos done the right thing here? Ceasefire ends, ELN step up their attacks, he pulls out of peace talks. Is that the right move? Yeah, I think he, he, he was put on a very, very difficult position because the ELN has not been 100% committed to this peace process. There has been a significant breaches of the agreement over the last three months. Uh, there have been some kidnapping, there have been some attacks on security forces. Obviously, they accuse mutually of not being uh, faithful to the agreement. Uh, at the same time, there is a major, major a backlash against the previous peace process with the FARC, and, and therefore to make excessive concession to the ELN politically would be highly counterproductive for, for President Santos. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing which is very difficult to manage is the ELN is now a fully centralized organization, unlike the FARC, which have total control over its right. fighters. The problem with the ELN is, is that lack of centralization, and therefore there is a score for mistakes. Yeah, and I think the two of the things that are sort of settled and guaranteed is that the ELN by no means has the firepower that the FARC had. It's a, it's a much smaller group. And the other one is that they've tried to fill themselves or plug themselves into the gaps once the peace deal with the FARC materialized. Now that that has happened, is the ELN maybe testing the waters because they saw what the FARC got? They saw that the FARC could fight the government for decades um, by co conducting acts of what is called terrorism around the world, and eventually they can end up in suits and maybe even in government. So why should you actually have a peace deal without getting everything you want before then? <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, that's partially true because if you look at the previous agreement with the FARC, there were moments like this in which there was a significant uh, breakdown in the agreement. The FARC went and for a couple of weeks it started blowing up uh, different infrastructure assets, and then two weeks later uh, they came back to the negotiating table. This actually could happen again here. Uh, but then uh, what happened in the next couple of weeks would be a significant indicator of that. Also, uh, the, the mediation of the Catholic Church and the United Nations would be also an important factor here. But uh, the bottom line is it would be very difficult for uh, Santos to make concessions uh, when you are in the run-up to an election in which you need to be seen and perceived as strong on security. Mm -hmm. So it's a very difficult balance for President Santos at the moment. Okay, that's interesting because he's, you'd think that here's a man who wants to live up to his Nobel Peace Prize, and that was related to the FARC, but you're saying he has to be tough in the run-up to election. How tough can he get without maybe risking another full-blown insurgency and just strengthening the hand of the ELN? Well, I, I think, uh, I think we, we need to put the ELN in the right dimension. This is not the FARC. If you see the four attacks that happened, it was only on three eastern provinces, Casanare, uh, Arauca, and Boyacá. And the security uh, forces 
a claim that there is only 1,200 fighters. This is compared with the FARC that was a proper national an uh, army. So I think it wouldn't be good for the country. It would be a, a, a mild setback for Santos, but the ELN does not have the military capability to inflict the damage that the FARC. So uh, in many ways, it would be also in the interest of the ELN to understand this, that they're not going to get all the concessions that the FARC did, especially in this environment where there is a significant body of opinion against uh, excessive concession to guerrillas that uh, carry on uh, destroying national infrastructure. So uh, I will say it would be a setback, but no a major setback. Mm -hmm. uh, militarily, the ELN is not exactly the far, uh, has not the capability to lead a new wave of insurgency in Colombia. Yeah, I understand that they're making themselves a bit richer by expanding their role in the drug trade ever since the FARC demobilization. It's the ELN plus some former far-right paramilitaries. They're wiggling into those gaps and making some cash in the drug trade. You're not extremely worried, but if I had to ask you, what does the ELN want politically? In a nutshell, what do they want? Well, they want... The, the, the problem with the ELN is they want politically more concessions than, than the FARC. For example, the ELN has said all along that they want the nationalization of the oil industry, for example. Uh, they, they, they don't want U.S. multinational to operate in Colombia. For you to demand that, you really need an immense polit mili military force, which the, the ELN does not have. The reason why there was a peace process with the FARC was precisely because the demands of FARC were relatively modest. Uh, and if you demand the nationalization of the whole oil industry, you will go nowhere. So the ELN will need to downgrade their demands, uh, and that would be uh, something that is going to be discussed again and again. But that is a red line. The Colombian government is not going to guarantee to offer such a big concession, not only because uh, the majority of the countries now pacify, but also because militarily, really, the ELN is a relatively a small guerrilla com compared with the FARC. And given that they're so small, and just a couple thousand fighters, if Santos had to order the military to go and crush them, even however difficult that might be, but if he, if he did that and they did crush them, would the Colombian people support it? I think so. I think I think there is a significant rejection of the Colombian population to to the guerrilla. Fifty years of of a continuous war uh, is quite clear that there is no uh, significant support of the civilian population. Uh, I think we, with the with the alien could do a lot of damages by joining forces for with uh, with the drug trafficking gangs, but even there. I think the Colombian has the capability to to hit them quite 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 hard. In fact, there is a new law being approved by Congress which allows the military to use U.S. aircraft and mm -hmm. fire power against um, criminal gangs, and that would be deployed uh, in those areas in which the ALN want to operate. Uh, the thing is, the government just want to 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 complete the task and and pacify the country totally, uh, but uh, if, if that's not possible, then uh, they have to deal with the ELN in a different way. Carlos Caicedo, thanks so much for your insight. It's been good to talk to you here on the Newsmakers. You're welcome.